Hey folks, Eric here at Avon, I'm out in the shop working on our prototype for our aux box or auxiliary box. And this is the box that's gonna handle all of the inputs and outputs for your ATC system. So I thought I'd give you an early look at a prototype build so you guys can get an idea of what this thing is gonna do and how it's gonna work. So um, let's jump in and take a look at what I've got on the bench. All right, so let's dive into this aux box and see what's going on here. This is uh, very clearly an early prototype. The thing that we're actually gonna ship you is gonna be a very clean industrialized version of this. This is just something to use on a bench for uh, me to test some software workflows and for us to test some of these discrete pieces of hardware in here. So the heart of this aux box is the Centroid Ether 1616. That's this board right here. And this expands the amount of inputs and outputs that you can have in a stock Centroid Acorn, which if you're not aware is only eight inputs and eight outputs. This works by putting this Ether 1616 on the same network as your Acorn. So your Acorn board will live um, in your EX control box uh, as it is currently. And the ethernet cable that comes from your EX control, instead of going directly to your PC, is now gonna plug into this box and it's gonna plug into this switch here. The Ether 1616 is also plugged into this switch and your PC gets plugged into the switch as well. That puts them all in the same network and gives your Acorn access to an additional 16 inputs and 16 outputs. Now, a lot of these inputs that are coming in here are things that are currently not used on your AV spindle or not read by the controller. So things like draw bar up, draw bar down, spindle stopped, um, a tool presence sensor that we're gonna add so we can detect tools um, in your tool rack and whether or not your tool rack has been deployed or retracted. So a lot of the safety system stuff that we've been uh, sort of teasing and talking about is all gonna be handled by um, a lot of these inputs on the Ether 1616. For outputs for operating things like um, Supplying air to your spindle, extending your tool rack, running the air blast, which will clean off your tool holders, um, and any additional pneumatic accessories like a coolant mister or pop-up pins or aggregate drill head or whatever other pneumatic things you would want to connect to your machine um, are going to utilize this 12 valve bank here. So this is a really cool valve bank that we sourced. You get 12 valves. They're really, really compact in here. Um, it's a nice one, sort of industrial unit that fits in, fits in here. It's a lot better than using 12 individual valves like this, just for space constraints and wiring, wiring cleanliness and things like that. So this really is going to handle all of the parts of the ATC. It will read the state of the spindle, it will read all of the safety systems, and it will actuate all the different pneumatic things um, in the system as well. So if you are running an AV spindle and uh, an Avid tool rack and all the Avid stuff, this is going to be super easy for you to connect. All the inputs are going to be labeled here and all the outputs are going to be labeled. So things like tool rack deploy, tool rack retract, air blast, all of that stuff uh, will be plug and play. Now, one of the cool things about the system is um, this Ether 1616 allows you to connect a whole bunch of different accessories to your machine as well. So we're not taking up all of the I.O. on this just for the ATC. There's going to be a lot of extra I.O. for you folks to add different accessories to. So we wanted to do two things here. We want to make this easy for people to plug in sort of stock Avid stuff, people to be able to expand on it, and so I guess three things. We wanted to clean up all of this wiring. And we've done that by creating this uh, sort of interconnect board that um, cleans up a lot of this wiring. So basically, the Ether 1616 is these two ribbon cables that output to these relay boards. We're actually eliminating the need to have these relay boards, and we're running both of these um, Ether 1616 outputs into these ribbon cables here, and we're processing all of the output signals and sending um, a lot of the output signals over to this valve bank over this DB25 connector. So this board is gonna connect directly to this valve bank um, and take signals from the Ether 1616. So it's obviously gonna clean up a lot of this wiring. And then of course there's uh, plug and play connectors for things like the laser, uh, draw bar, um, auxiliary relays, all of that sort of stuff. Um, now, let's say you're somebody that wants to take advantage of uh, some additional relay outputs for different accessories. You can actually still do that. So this board will be mounted you know, somewhere in the center of this aux box. 
and we've got these configurable dip switches here. So let's say you don't want to use the AVID standard function for a particular output. Um, maybe it's, uh, we have it set to one of these valves and you want to control an electrical load. Um, instead, well, that's okay. You can just override the default setting by flipping one of these dip, sw dip switches and you can send the signal to a different output. So you can actually plug back in a centroid relay board um, into this port right here, and then you can access uh, that relay here um, really easily. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get clean industrialized wiring, you get plug and play stuff for all the Avid things, and then if you want to do something custom, no problem, flip a couple dip switches and you can sort of override any of these stock functions that you want. So pretty cool setup. I think it's gonna be a really, really useful board for folks. Um, we're also uh, gonna be handling the laser stuff with this aux box as well. There's gonna be a couple different ways you can use lasers. Um, there's a power supply in here that will support lasers. We're also gonna support the existing laser boxes that are out there. Um, so let me show you uh, kind of a sneak peek of what the industrialized version of this is gonna be. It's not a final design, but it's, I think it's reasonably close. So uh, let's jump over to the computer and I'll give you a quick tour. Okay, so here is the uh, sort of industrialized version of this. Um, this is gonna be contained in the same size control box as your EX control and all of the other boxes you may have on your machine. Um, but here you can see a lot of the air outputs are over here. This is that 12 valve bank. This is actually where the Ether 1616 currently is in this design. And I really like this because it uh, puts all the diagnostic lights face up so you can see them. You've got some DIN rail here for power and signal distribution. This is the um, Ethernet switch that belongs in here. That's going to be powered by the power supplies that are in here. This is the main air supply and dump valve. And right here, this is the location of our sort of interconnect board. And then we've got a spot here for a centroid relay board right up top. And this is on some standoffs and there is a power supply that tucks underneath all of this stuff. And then right over here is a digital air pressure sensor. So that's gonna tell uh, the controller that you've got enough air to run your ATC. And if you ever uh, you know, lose air, it's gonna stop the system um, and warn you. So uh, that is, likely pretty close to what this is going to look like when we ship it. Um, if you folks have any questions on this, please let us know. We'll be uh, giving you more information as we can. Thanks.